Hello gamers, hope you are all doing good. Anand here from Tech My Style with another video. Today we are going to look at this pre-built gaming PC from HP. I hope at this point everyone is aware of the graphic card situation we are in. Gamers are struggling to get any decent graphic card at all. Given the situation is going from bad to worse, it's not a bad idea to consider a pre-built gaming PC. Don't expect to be an easy path either, due to the graphic card shortage, even the pre-built gaming PCs are going at higher price than usual and seeing out of stocks if any decent PC is going for a good price. With that background, let's dive right into reviewing this gaming PC, HP Pavilion Gaming TG01-1076Z model. I got this one for $865 including tax. It might seem like more for a boring pre-built gaming PC, but it got some impressive specs. It is equipped with a Ryzen 5 4600G processor with a 3.7GHz base clock and 4.2GHz boost, a GTX 1650 Super, 16GB of DDR4 memory at 3200MHz speed, 512GB PCIe M.2 NVMe SSD, onboard dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, 400W platinum power supply and comes with a basic wide keyboard and mouse. To see what it would take to build a similar PC ourselves, assuming you get a 1650 Super at a decent price. I made this PC part picker list. I used the Ryzen 5 3600 here which is the closest resemblance to 4600G. I priced 1650 Super at a $200 which is very modest in current situation. Used a gold certified power supply instead of platinum and a OEM Windows 10 license. Even with that the pre-tax totally is coming to close what I paid for. So the hardware is totally worth the money we pay. Yeah I hear you. It's a pavilion desktop, looks really boring and we don't care what's inside. But don't worry, I'll show you what it takes to do a case swap. Please subscribe so you don't miss that video. Comparing its size to standard case sizes, it's really a compact micro ATX. It's less than 14 inch tall. Nothing special outside, just a standard metal case with plastic front panel. There's only one vented area on the panel for air intake and one exhaust fan on the back, looks like an ATMM one. On the front panel, it got a power button, a headphone microphone combo jack, 4 USB Type 3 port at 5 gigabits per second data rate, an SD card reader and a USB Type C port again at a 5 gigabit per second data rate. On the back, it got headphone microphone and line-in jacks, 4 USB 2.0 ports and 1 gigabit Ethernet port. We have the DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort coming from the discrete graphic card and the motherboard video outs are nicely covered. Let's tear this apart and see what's inside. I'll be doing a full disassembly today as I'll be anyway doing a case swap. Start by removing the screw securing the side panel and take off the side panel. Lift the front panel clips and remove it. There's only one connector going to the motherboard for the bottom light. Next, remove the frame covering majority of the cables. It has only one screw and can be pulled out easily. We can proceed to removing the graphic card now. Remove the 6-pin PCIe power connector and remove the screw securing the graphic card to the case. Press the PCIe slot lock and lift the graphic card. Let's proceed to removing the drive caddy. There's only one screw securing it to the case which is located in the front. There are few cables securing the drive caddy. Once they are freed up, it can be lifted and pulled out. Even though this case doesn't have a DVD drive, the drive caddy doesn't have room for more drives. The bottom is reserved for DVD drive and the top you can add either one 3.5 inch drive or one 2.5 inch drive. Now we can take off the power supply. Remove the two screws holding the power supply to the case and disconnect all the cables. There are two 4 pin connectors and one special connector going to the motherboard. As mentioned before, this is a 400 watt 80 plus platinum rated power supply. This is in neither ATX or SFX power supply. Instead, this is not so frequently used TFX form factor. This is also lacking the standard 24 pin motherboard power connector, so it's pretty useless with other motherboard. There's one SATA cable and a special 4 pin to dual SATA power connectors. Remove them and we can proceed with separating the motherboard. There are 8 screws holding the motherboard in place. We need to also unscrew the wireless card and disconnect the case fan. There are VGA and HDMI caps which are also holding the motherboard to the case. That's it. Now we slide out and lift the motherboard holding the CPU cooler. Place the motherboard on a safe surface and remove the memory modules. 
Let's move to the NVMe SSD. Unscrew it and it automatically pops up. Just pull out from the M.2 slot. Finally, to the processor. Loosen the four screws of the CPU cooler and disconnect the fan connector. Separate the cooler from the motherboard and clean the thermal paste from the CPU. There's our Ryzen 5 4600G. I'm leaving it on the motherboard until I'm ready to give this a new home. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Please do visit back. I'll be making another video about using this processor with a B450 chipset motherboard.